Yes. I'm suggesting, I'm, uh, I'm, sus I'm suspecting that my. Uh, I, was, I was suspecting because I've been raising my hand for a long time. Mr. Chairman, my colleagues, my questions are very few. Okay, I can, I can make just two or three. But first, I want to commend the President, uh, President Buhari, for fishing out people like him with the kind of uh, qualifications that we have seen here. Dr. Oke Enilema happens to be somebody I've known for how many years? 20, 20, 29 years or thereabouts. And uh, then he was a medical doctor with Dr. Anderson. And we formed the Nigerian Scarab Association together. So we go way back. So when I saw him appearing here today, I know he has the capacity, he has the capability, he has the right qualifications. That is why I said I must commend the president for fishing people like this out. But there is a question that I'd like to ask you. It has to do with politics. You've been a chief executive of large organizations. So you are used to the top. You have nothing to do with the bottom. In politics, it is from the bottom up. How will you relate with politicians if you are given an elevated office? The experience we have had in the last 16 years of our democracy is that sometimes we produce super ministers who hardly take phone calls, even from state governors, talk less of senators. They don't, take, they, don't, they don't receive phone calls, they don't answer phone calls from senators. You have appeared today in the hallowed chambers. Will you, if you are given the opportunity to be one of the super ministers, will you take phone calls from senators, even from your state, when they call you? Will you be able to relate with your state? Even from a bad event, I mean, considering the fact that for over 27 years we have had nothing to do with the grassroots, and politics is about grassroots. That's where my worry comes from. The other thing that I must commend you is the fact that I looked at your, your tax papers and I discovered that in spite of earning 27 million naira in 2014, you paid tax of 4 million. But we had your colleague of yours, another nominee, who was here yesterday, and earned 60 million and paid tax of 50,000 naira. And if you are given an opportunity to be a minister of finance, how will you be able to collect the proper tax from that minister? <laughs> from that minister. <laughs> Considering that you were able, you earned only 27 million naira in 2014, and you were. You, you pay, you, Mr. Chairman, he earned 27 million and paid tax of over 4 million. And we had another person who came here, another nominee, who earned 60 million and paid tax of 50,000 naira. Um, Majority, why don't you restrict yourself to the events of today uh, and put the question? Uh, uh, What will be your strategy to ensure that Nigerians pay tax so that we can also give them the benefits of social amenities, particularly starting from the Federal Executive Council, where one of your ministers is owing the federal government <laughs> because of wrong payment of tax? Let the, the last question, sir, that I would like to ask you is on the aspect of your qualification. It would look like you graduated as a medical doctor at the age of 21. Will this mean that you enter medical school at the age of 14? 
Congratulations. And I'm done. I think on that note, if you can take the Thank you, Your Excellency. You don't have to start with the last one, you can start with the first one. Okay, and then come the way, come now, okay. The first question, how will you help Abia State? One of the comments I made is, and I know that those of you that know me will know that this is true, that I am a people-centric person. I certainly value Abia State, Umaya. I can even go down to my hamlet and my, my hut where I come from. So, and I have been active in the community. For instance, myself and my family, we've been organizing football competitions in our locale for well over 10 years, and that is something that is well known. Um, my father was a reverend minister, you know, and we're very involved in community projects, and that continues to be our attitude. We believe that you serve God by serving man. So I believe that we'll serve Abia State, and like was rightly pointed out, serve the whole nation as well. Um, in terms of the question around maintenance culture, this is a very apt observation. Because in the past, we've had a tendency to think about just capital projects without thinking about how we sustain it, whether it's things we own individually or things we own collectively as a community. I believe that the rule of the thumb from my background is that you, you budget about 10% of what it costs to purchase an asset for its annual maintenance. So I will expect that whenever we are planning for capital projects, that our maintenance culture should be part of it. And in fact, best practice is where, as you are buying, you are entering into a maintenance contract that is long-term in nature so that the asset will continue to work for you for many years, whether it's um, an asset that belongs to people individually or that one that belongs to us collectively as a people. So that's something I would certainly support in every shape and form. In terms of some of the banking practices that we may have seen in the past, I say the past because maybe I'm optimistic. I believe that the environment is changing, it's getting better, because with more transparency, you know, I believe that most people would like to do the right thing. You just have to create an environment for them to do the right thing, and if they do the wrong thing, you, you know, it's punished. I think if you have a system of sanctions, whether it's at the bank level or at the country level or state level, you will find that people will start migrating towards doing what is right. So, uh, again, I would expect that whether it's banks or other institutions that may have done some things in the past that they got away with, that will create a better environment with more transparency, where the rule of law is observed and obeyed, and where proper ethics and morals are promoted, that people will tend to fall in line. And that would be my response to that, because I believe that that's already happening. And in fact, to say one more thing on that, if you look at the banking industry and some of the best performing banks, some of them actually are banks that have a service culture that people know about. And therefore, I would expect that most banks will tend to emulate those banks. On the issue of the budget, or what somebody call, or what the distinguished senator called the annual um, ritual of having the budget, then the disbursements fall short. One of the things I think you will see with this government is a level of discipline and realism that will mean that we will budget for what we can spend and we will spend what we have. And it's going to be very transparent as well. And because also there is a promotion or emphasis on, you know, not just transparency but proper governance, there is no incentive really to, you know, either do over budgeting or to withhold what is due. I believe that like one of the signals we've seen from the government already is a willingness to work as a team transparently to make sure that it means what it says and it does what it says it will do. And I think this will translate to the budget, frankly, because the key is transparency and accountability. On the question around foreign banks and the monies that are held abroad by Nigerians and under the new and um, greatly increased anti-money laundering environment where there's a lot of scrutiny on funds, and whether the government should in fact be granted amnesty. The sense I get, remember that I'm somebody coming in, I've been outside the government looking from the outside, but I'm as somebody coming in. The sense I get of the new government is that there's a lot of interest in attracting money back that may have been lost through these um, things that went wrong in the past. And I will expect that such a government will look at all the options it has for recovering that money. A realistic, pragmatic government will look at all its options and use the best options for recovering the money. If it needs to do some trades with some people, I mean, he, may, he will look at it and look at the pros and cons. As you know, in this government, there are a lot of eminent people who are very qualified in dealing with these issues. So I'll be surprised if he doesn't get the proper attention that he deserves. How would you relate to politicians and the people? I think I answered this earlier by saying I'm a very people-centric person. I love humility as a quality, both in other people and in myself. And I believe it is only proper that you treat your neighbor as yourself. 
So I don't expect to be high-handed in any way. In terms of the issue of tax collection, I addressed it in my opening comment that as a nation, we need to pay our taxes. And, and to be honest, on a, on, a, on a more serious note, it's a culture we all need to develop. And I'll share, I'll end on you know, just a, a small anecdote. I used to live in South Africa. When I got to South Africa was when President Nelson Mandela was elected. And the blacks at the time were reluctant to pay their taxes because they felt that the government had not been just. But as a new government came in, there was a new culture that had to be built of paying taxes. And eventually, they paid their taxes today. In fact, they have the highest tax to GDP ratio in Africa. And I believe the same thing will happen here. What we need to have are responsible governments that enter a social contract with the people and create an environment where you pay your tax. And in any event, if you don't pay it, you also get penalized for not paying it. So it's not just something you're doing as a moral obligation, but it's also a legal obligation. And I think under, that such, a, under such an environment, I think tax collection will go up. And then finally, on my being a medical doctor, you're right, I qualified at a young age, 21, 22, and of course went on to other things from there. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Can take your leave.